every young footballer's dream would be to play and make their debut for Real Madrid. And you would be talking about this one. The famous debut. <laughs> How did I know? <laughs> Have you ever been in an interview about Real Madrid where it hasn't been asked? No, but all I say, what was your Real Madrid debut like? <laughs> exactly. That's the, that's the point I'm making. I would have given one second yeah. to play one professional football match. Yeah. So, okay, talk us through it. Yeah, I remember a couple of days before, one day Luxembourg said to me, you're going to play, so get your parents over. So parents came to the game. Night before a game, it was always in a hotel. So we'd always go to the local hotel. And before every single game, whether it be a practice game, friendly game, pre-season, league game, whatever game, I'm always nervous the night before. And I'm talking like myself. Like I'm in bed and I wake up in the morning like, and your belly starts. And this is a night of my belly starting and rumbling and I've just got butterflies all day in my belly. As soon as I get the game, I'm absolutely perfect. As soon as I cross the right line, not a problem. I think I'm the, I'm the best player there. Then the next minute I just see this ball flying towards me. I think, go on, deflect it away. Obviously, I'd been out for a, a year, didn't have my, didn't know where I was on the pitch, deflecting the goal. And I think to myself, oh my God, against Atletico Bilbao, what, 100,000 people in the stadium. I just want the ground to wake me up. I remember one of the players picking me up off the floor, Pavon, come and pick me up, he said, come on, let's get going. Anyway, start playing again, got a yellow card, should have been a red. It was a horrendous tackle because I'm not up for it, charged, whatever. Should have been a red. Second half comes anyway. I remember. Uh, one of the forward knocking the ball past me and I've just body checked him and sprinted after it and got the ball off all. good bit of defending that keep on going keep on going the next minute the referee charges over and they're quite aggressive the Spanish referees and I'm, I'm seeing him what marching towards him I'm like oh no he's going to get the yellow out and taking like slow motion he just went boom slow yellow card then be like Roberto Carlos Rabinho all of them players surrounding the referee he just went off so I remember walking off in the whole stadium applauded me off the pitch I couldn't believe it I couldn't believe it they all like the whole stadium applauded me off I was like wow wowzers and then uh, we were getting beat 2-1 at the time we actually won it I think 4-2 in the end so that was that was good that we won then after the game I'm lying there in the, in the, in the dressing room and Ronaldo comes and he says how are you I said as you can imagine obviously devastated he went don't worry about it you're fit your leg's fine you can you can play on you can you can kick on from here, so yeah. From going from a horrendous minute to making your debut, we're getting applauded off by all them fans. Special. So you um, you obviously learned to to uh, speak some Spanish. So did you pick up all the local news, all the national newspapers the next day? And did you read the Spanish what they were saying about you? Yeah, I try to read. I try to read bits. Obviously, it was, it was difficult to understand. But my mum still got all the cuttings from what the English press was saying about me. <laughs> uh, and that was quite funny to be fair when you when you look back. But I did try to read all the, the, the newspapers, periodicals they're called. Um, so I try to read all them. And you just try to improve. Got a bit of stick. What well, if a duck's back? I'd been out for a year. Talking about every schoolboy's dream to play for Real Madrid, it's every schoolboy's dream to just to get an autograph of someone like Ronaldo, Figo, Zidane, Roberto Carlos and Raul. And you, you played with them all. You've spoken about how good Ronaldo was I think the Brazilian lads were were really good with you as well just expand on that yeah they were they were top draw like um, after games and that we used to go to restaurants and sit, even if their family were there we used to go around and, and, and just sit with them and just have a, have a good time if my friends came over we'd go to Ronaldo's house so you can imagine my friends are coming over from England like 22 year old lads who were maybe labouring or whatever or joiners or welders and the next minute they're in Ronaldo's house playing pool with him <laughs> Do you know that you can picture them? You can just picture it, can't you? But the Brazilians are that like likable and they're just normal. All I want to do is have a good time. But on the pitch, they're, they're a different, they're a different ball game. They're like at it, off the pitch. They just want to enjoy themselves, and they really helped to be honest with you because I didn't, I wasn't that that lonely. I'd go on there, have, have tea or whatever, and enjoy it. Um. The mental side of going to a dressing room like that, did you have any issue, I know you had your injury issues, believing you were good enough to be in that dressing room? You, you know, you're just a lad from Middlesbrough, you know, that's what you'd say, I'm sure, yeah. that you deserve to be in that dressing room with those kind of world-class players. You have to get yourself mentally to the no, right I, level. I, like I say, on the inside, on the outside, I didn't look so like that, but on the inside, I had a burning desire to be the best defender in the world. And I believed 100% that I... I was I was right for that club and and right to play with them players. Um, you have to believe in yourself. You have to have that inner drive. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't really 
couldn't do it because of uh, of the injury at the time. But yeah, I definitely believed in myself, no doubt about that. Yeah, you went on to play with a young Sergio Ramos at uh, centre back, didn't you? Who was just coming through, I think, as a, as a teenager. Then did you did you have a little inkling then that he'd be as as yeah. good as he turned yeah. out? Sergio came on the second season from Seville, um, and I knew he was going to be a, a special player. He was a very more individual defender as a more team defender. Uh, but he's playing right back, centre back. He even played centre midfield against Rosenberg. But you could see he's going to be an outstanding, outstanding talent. And what's he got? Something like 182 caps for Spain. Won a World Cup, two European Cups, two European Championships, four Champions Leagues, the Leaguers. Oh, he's unbelievable. He's one of their biggest ever players.